legislation national credit act so now uh, let me just explain uh, what is this uh, national credit act so now this national credit act is one of the acts that has been drafted by 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 the the, the south african uh, government so in particular most of these acts um they have been revised or they are called recent why are they calling why are they called recent they are called recent because they've been established by anc uh, in the year 1994 after Nelson Mandela has came into power as the leader of um, uh, ANC as a political party. So now remember before 1994 uh, most of the black people were mostly disadvantaged. So now Mandela and his associates the moment they, they, they got into office they tried by all means to revise all the necessary regulations or all the necessary acts to make sure that um, this acts cater for each and every person regardless of your age regardless of the, the the color of your skin regardless of the language that we speak so indeed mandela was an icon because he didn't advocate for uh our discri discrimi discrimination or he didn't advocate for fighting between uh races as, as it did uh, take place before anc came into power and remember that was the time of during apartheid um, era okay right so now according to this uh, credit act it says that each and every person should be given a platform to take a credit from any financial provider regardless that uh, that particular financial provider first checks uh, what the credit worthiness of um, the person before they can issue out the credit to them that's what they, they say and in this regard the national credit act normally uses what we call uh what credit um regulator and this credit regulator they are the ones on the ground to make sure that they check the credit um, worthiness of a person before uh, our finances are actually released to them that are supposed to be paid in a latter or on a latter stage okay right this act was uh, established to protect both businesses and consumer from negligent lending practices that result in over uh, debtness for consumers or consumer protection act so now what it does mean is that uh, this act makes sure that not everyone qualifies for a credit because some people will find that they are very bad in terms of paying so now the moment a person uh, comes with the credentials or comes with the documents to apply for such um uh, uh, what credit and the business gives that particular person a credit before checking whether they are able to pay their credit then you find that at the end of the day if a particular person fails to settle their debt then the business in that regard is going to run a loss okay right so now this act promotes and advances social and economic um, welfare of consumers in south africa how is that so okay right uh, the moment a person qualifies to take a loan it means that that loan is going to uh, be utilized by that particular person so as to improve their standard of living improve their standard of living in a manner that this kind of person can actually spend those monies uh, towards uh, buying the groceries or can spend those monies towards maybe uh, investment and the moment they do invest it means that now they are going to have the multiplication of the money that they took from the from the the financial what financial provider and at the end of the day you find that the standard of living for the household uh, is going to improve now they are going to be able to meet up with the clothing needs they are going to be able to meet up with uh, uh, the, the water bills and also they are going to be able to meet up with the electricity bills and the lights okay right so now moving on uh great um 11s we also have um uh the act that uh, we normally call it um employment equity act so now this one of employment equity act it does get rid of uh, discrimination amongst um uh, the parties so it does say that the employer and the employees should always avoid the issue of discrimination they should uh, work or they should um, uh, associate that uh, with one another in a manner that is um harmonious okay right so now this act um this act is there to lim to eliminate unfair discrimination so now this discrimination it takes place uh, if you check most of the businesses they do apply discrimination especially in terms of age so now this act says no to that there shouldn't be any discrimination 
there shouldn't be discrimination because of your race race we talk of the color of the skin there shouldn't be this, this discrimination because of age because of gender whether you're female you're male because of the, the religion that you are following or because now you're a nicer person you are disabled no this act says that as long as this particular person qualifies to perform on this particular task let a chance be given to that particular individual without uh, what give, coming up with um, such unnecessary discrimination okay right also it ensures that democratic makeup of the country is reflected at all levels in the in the business so now uh, what it does say is that uh, each and every uh, person details they should be kept by the by the business and now this person if the person has some shortcomings or shortfalls they shouldn't be uh, what judged on that but uh, you should be judged on the level of the persecution of um, their duties if this particular person is able to execute the duties or the roles that have been uh, granted to them then there shouldn't be any judgmental at all okay right credit levels so also we are going to check broad-based black economic um, empowerment under this one of broad-based black economic empowerment we are going to pay much um, uh, attention to to the what the pillars of the act meaning the backbones of this act so now one of the backbones of this act we are going to check the issue of um, managerial um, uh, positions we are also going to check uh, the issue of ownership we are also going to check the issue of um, skills development and also we are also going to check the issue of um, uh, the supply and um, enterprise okay right so now as i did explain in a previous slides that uh, uh, in most cases before uh, enc came into power black people were mostly disadvantaged they were not allowed to occupy managerial positions in organizations or institutions where they are they were working and also they were not allowed uh, to have ownership of the business they were also not allowed to have ownership of the the land and the lights as well they were not also allowed to enhance their skills when they are already employed but that that platform was only given to white people so that is why now the broad-based black economy empowerment act was introduced so as to make sure that each and every person who was previously disadvantaged is now catered for so now remember i said that when mandela and his associate uh, drafted this uh, set of acts in 1994 when they came into power under the umbrella of anc they 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 what they, they tried by all means that they cater for each and every person some of the acts yes they cater for each and every person regardless whether you are white regardless whether you're black but this one specifically of, of broad-based black economic empowerment it does cater for only black people because now as i did say earlier they were much disadvantaged in different set of um areas okay right so now this act ensures that previously disadvantaged people are uh, fully participated in the economy i did explain that why uh, are they expected um, to fully participate in the economy also under which umbrella i told you in this regard we only check um, the four pillars of this act okay right so now also this act deals with the constitutional rights in the workplace by addressing the issues such as um uh, working hours meaning this one now we are addressing the issue of the uh, basic conditions uh, of employment act so now what is this basic conditions of employment act when you talk of the basic conditions of employment act this act addresses the terms and the conditions that businesses should always follow on daily basis whenever they hit their operation so now uh, this act says that businesses uh, should always make sure that they 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 they, 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 they introduce uh, a normal working hours of eight um, eight hours uh, per day of which now if the 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 employee is working five days uh, per week then the expectation is uh, that um, they should work a maximum of um uh, 40 hours um, per week but now provided the employee wants to run for additional hours so it means that per day uh, businesses are expected to add an hour of which that hour uh, they are expected to compensate it so now that hour should be considered as what as the overtime okay right 
So now if you check, it says basic conditions of employment act, it deals with the constitutional rights in the workplace by addressing the issues such as um, working hours. So I did explain um, working hours. So now let's come to the issue of leaves. So now remember when you talk of leave, we check the period where employees are going to be off duty. And the moment employees are going to be off duty, they should be compensated for, provided they did make their employers aware that they are going to be off duty for that particular particular day. So now this leave, it, it is actually pregnant with a different set of leaves. We can talk of um, um, uh, what maternity leave. When, when a person is going to, or a woman, or is going to give birth, then there should be some particular days that a woman is going to be off duty. So now uh, the business should compensate for these days provided uh, that woman uh, did complete the form uh, that indicate uh, maternity leave. In the same manner, paternity leave is where now also a gentleman or a man now in this regard, the wife is going to give birth. So now the expectation is that um, uh, this man should also be given uh, that uh, that platform to be of duty. So to deal with what uh, to deal with um, or to help uh, with um, the wife whenever the wife is given birth. Okay, right. So now we also have a family responsibility leave. Where now under this family responsibility leave, now um, and there will be sometimes you find that uh, one of the family members, for example, example, maybe the wife, the child is sick. So now when in the workplace, you should notify your, your employer that, okay, you know what? My child is sick. My child is not feeling well. So now may I currently take two or three days of, of, of duty. So now of, of which now each and every employer or each and every business is expected to give uh, that particular uh, person what a consent to be of duty. Okay, right. So now remember I said that even when these people are of duties, they should be compensated for. Okay, right. Also now, let's check off the employment contracts pay slips. Uh, employment contract. When you talk of the employment contract, in this regard, we refer to what? We refer to the agreement, uh, the written agreement between the employer and the employee. And there are some aspects that should be indicated inside this um, agreement. So inside this agreement, there should be uh, what we call a job um, a specification. So now job specification, we refer to what we refer to um, the, the, what the, the, the requirements that are needed for a person to perform that particular job. And then when you talk of um, uh, job, what, uh, jo I mean, job, job description, we talk of what, we talk of the, the roles and the duties that a person should perform. But now job specification, we refer to the requirements that are needed um, uh, for that particular person to perform the job. Meaning in this regard, this uh, job specification takes into account the level of uh, what qualification that the person is actually possessing. Okay, right, grade levels. So now moving on, uh, we are going to discuss Labor Relations Act. So now when you talk of Labor Relations Act, we are referring to what? We are referring to uh, the act that promotes a, a good relationship between the employer and the employee. So now this act says that there should be what? There should be respect between the employer and the employee it, it, it doesn't go uh, one way but it does go uh, both ways an employer should always respect the employee in the same manner the employee should always um, respect um, the employer okay right uh, the, it says it deals with labor justice and to bring healthy industrial relationships or relations in the business between the employers and the employees so now what it does mean is that uh, there should be what there should be harmonious relationship uh, between what between uh, these two individuals okay right so now also let's check the issue of the skills development act so now the skills development act in this regard we refer to the act where uh, it says each and every employee at the workplace should always be given the platform to enhance the level of skills that they normally possess if you want uh, to improve or you want to enhance the level of skills that you already have but remember or bear in mind that this um, act only applies to those people who are already employed so now some businesses when you're already employed for them to give you a, a, a platform to enhance or, or to enroll for any leadership is a, is, a, is a difficult task or is a difficult uh, rock to to crack but this act says that each and every person regardless of the color of your skin 
the moment you qualify for that particular learnership each and every business should give you the platform to do so okay right so now remember also not each and every business is what has a right to what uh, to enroll for the skills development uh, act what they do they normally change the business that has the payroll of um, half a million or the business that is actually spending half a million on paying the wages and the salaries so now in this regard that is number one for a business to qualify and also they check the issue of what they also check up the issue of um, uh, the percentages so those businesses that normally qualify they pay one percent of uh, their profits to our uh, to the center and also one percent uh, shall come from the the employee okay so now under this skill development act there's a uh, there's a body that normally runs on the ground or on the field to make sure that um, uh, businesses who normally qualify uh, to uh, engage in skills development act they do so they pay the expected amount also they check or they approve if the payroll of that particular business uh, uh, reaches uh, half a million okay so now that is SETA and when we talk of a SETA SETA we, we refer to uh, sectoral education and training authority so now this is what this is the body that makes sure that um, they go there on the ground to make sure that uh, those businesses adhere to the rules and regulations or that those businesses adhere or follow the what the procedures that are contained in this uh, skills development act what do they how do they do that they they go on the ground they visit different set of businesses upon uh, from the, the their completion of the visit now they report the matter to the director general to take a decision on that then they don't take a decision on that and also they make sure that they promote and establish learnerships for different set of businesses to administer such okay right so now if you check we're saying that the main aim of this act is to improve the skills of all people in south africa and those employed by the the businesses so i've already uh, explained that so now we also have what you call uh, compensation for occupational uh, injuries as well as um, the disease so now in this regard we are going to pay much uh, attention towards the disease and the, uh, the injury so now quite as an act it only addresses the issue of um, safety at the workplace it says that if an employee uh, gets injured at the workplace or con conduct any disease at the workplace then such businesses should compensate them for that so but now it, it says that if the employees get injured uh maybe performing their own uh what their own what their own um uh, issues or their own roles but using the company resources such companies will never ever compensate for them for typical example you find that uh, the employee uh, is actually uh, a driver for that uh, particular business and is uh, driving the company's um, uh, business but now they go for lunch with uh, his family then upon uh, upon uh, what upon the journey or after the journey or while still on that particular journey then you find that um, they, they they get an accident in that regard the business is not going to compensate for that as well you find that that those are what that those businesses that are using heavy machineries and then you find that employees uh, do cut their fingers or their hands or they may cut the, the the other part of their bodies then in that regard the business is supposed to compensate or give them something for that and also this act says that there should be precautionary measures that businesses always um, take into account if the business is working with heavy machineries so they should make sure that there are protective uh, clothing available for each and every individual who is going to engage in use of such a bigger machineries so now before uh, what before what before uh, the business can actually compensate there are some necessary steps that um, uh, the business should uh, go through before they can uh, compensate because you may find that some of the injuries or some of the diseases these employees do conduct them at the workplace via their own negligence so now in that regard then the business will be left with um, nothing but to go through deeper research okay right also it improves compensation for disablement or death caused by injuries or diseases contracted by employees uh, in the course of their employment okay i did um, explain this as well okay right so now 
uh, we are going to to deal with what, what we are going to deal now with what we are going to deal now with um um the adaptation to different set of um challenges remember in chapter one grade levels we were dealing with what we we're dealing with uh, the business environment and uh, how this business environment can influence the business operation so that the business can make a lot of profit or how this um, uh, environment can pose a challenge or can act as a barrier uh, from businesses achieving their desired profits or anticipated uh, profits or actually planned goals okay right so now in this chapter we are we are we are actually going to check how easily businesses normally adapt to such challenges how businesses normally get used to those challenges because now in chapter one businesses were studying the surroundings that were uh, actually posing a challenge to them so now they are adapted to them now meaning now they know that okay at this angle we have this challenge and also at this angle we have this challenge and we are used to this challenge now let's check how best we can maximize the collection of profits having what having studied our alter challenges and now uh, we check um, how best we can uh, what process or produce uh, goods and um, services okay right um uh create what create um uh, 11s so now we are going to what uh, we are going to uh to check uh what the terms and the definitions so now here are the terms and the definitions that uh, we are going to check but before we can land on to that let's check uh, the necessary questions that might arise or what you must know after uh, learning uh, this uh, topic so questions might come uh, to say explain discuss or recommend ways in which businesses can adapt to challenges of the micro market and um, macro uh, environment so now grade levels it is so alarming or it is so important for you to always make sure that you understand each and every action verb that has been used in a question like uh, when the question says explain you must know what is expected of you and also if the question says discuss you must also know what is expected of you and also if your question says recommend you should as well know what is expected of you so now these are called action verbs and then you should always understand the meaning of each and every action verb because some people will find that the question says explain and when the question says explain you find that instead of explaining they stayed or they list so that is why it is so important for you to what to understand the meaning of each and every action verb okay again a question might come to say divine explain discuss or describe the following ways in which businesses can adapt to challenges of the uh, above mentioned aspect okay right and also we may find that the question can say give practical examples of mega takeovers and oxygens as well as alliances so i will explain in depth the meaning of um, all these um uh, what uh, concept okay also the question can say identify uh, the examples from given set of scenarios and also a question can say quote um, from the given or set of um, scenarios so one might ask why are we always dealing with our scenarios under business studies we are dealing with a part most of the scenarios under business studies because we'll be analyzing different um, uh, businesses because uh, if you can bear in mind so now uh, businesses normally encounter different set of challenges so that is why it is so important to always analyze and come up with a proper suggestion or proper recommendation uh, for each and every business to defeat the challenges that they'll be facing in that particular uh, time period okay right so now also uh, when the question says um recommend you should know uh, what is expected of you so now uh, upon the completion of this uh, topic or this chapter a question might say recommend projects that can be undertaken by businesses as part of um, social responsibility and and explain the benefits of uh, the project for our uh, businesses okay right so now guys if you still remember uh, 
it is the responsibility of the business to make sure that um, they give back to the community where uh, it does operate from and also it is responsibility for the community where the business operates from to make sure that they protect that particular business to make sure that they go to that particular business to support them in terms of buying goods and um, and services so it means this goes two ways business should give back to the community and the community also should make sure that um, they protect that particular business so that is why we are talking of the social of responsibility okay again the question can say discuss or explain reasons why business are lobby or also it can say uh, explain or discuss uh, or describe different types of lobbying and um, the likes okay also the bargaining sessions we are going to go deeper and explain what it does mean and also the question say explain you must know the use of this action verb if it says explain what um, is expected of you okay right click uh, 11 uh, if you check we did uh, go through uh, explain and also you must check out uh, the advantages of our networking so networking i will explain it in depth as well and also you must uh, give um, uh, the definition on the meaning of power relations of which i'll go deeper and explain them as well you are supposed to give the dis or discuss or describe or explain ways businesses can form uh, power relations is strategic allies agreements persuasion of our large investors company representatives um the influence and the likes and again you should what identify uh, the lobbying okay right creator 11 i will explain this um uh, in depth so now if you check here we are faced with what with the terms and the definition so now we have two columns the first column contains what it contains uh, the, the term or the what the the concept while uh, the second column uh, uh, normally contains what it contains uh, the definition of um of the concept that appear in what in column one okay right so now when you talk of information management information management you refer to finding recording storing and retrieving of information from various sources so that it can be used effectively by businesses so now when we are saying that this information uh, should be stored should also be what should also be gathered and also should be recorded and also should be retrieved so what we mean is that uh, it should also be utilized in an efficient manner what we mean by word efficiency efficiency is when we try by all means not to engage in any waste so such information shouldn't be wasted imagine to what uh, to to go on the ground to gather the information to record to store it it's a waste of resource so now upon from the waste or the use of resource now you find that wastage is there or the information is not profitable to the business then in that regard it means that resources have been used unnecessarily that is a waste on on its own okay right so now we have strategic response so now here we are actually referring to a reaction to a need by developing a system that will meet in the long term and um, that need that has actually been identified what do you mean by a need remember when you talk of a need we are we are talking of over aging what over aging aspect that should uh, be available for that business to run okay right so now let's uh, move on to a mega when you talk of a mega we normally refer to two businesses of similar sizes that are willingly to combine to become one but even though if you still remember under what under the competition act of south africa Competition Act of South Africa, it says no to, 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 to Mega or, or Meiji. Why does it say no to Meiji? It does say no to Meiji because now, if you check out uh, most of the businesses, they merge because they, they want to run away from competition. And when there's competition on the crown, it means that customers are going to have that um, privilege of buying goods and services that are of a higher quality. But now the moment this business is now from what from from a combination uh, to become one it means that now chances are very high for customers to be exploited so now according to uh competition act of south africa it says no to that but now as always i was actually what explaining away term um, a mega we are saying that is when two or more businesses that are of the same size combine to become one but now bear in mind that great levels that making imaging is not allowed according to south african 
uh, competition ad. Okay, right. So now moving on, we have what? Moving on, we have um, a takeover. So now this takeover, we refer to the act of assuming control of uh, something, especially when one company buys one another company against uh, its will. So now most of the times, this takeover, it normally happens when a giant company, uh, what a giant company uh, adopts or just uh, takes a, a, a what a, a, a weak company sometimes can be by force sometimes can be by agreement but now normally these are just companies are the ones who normally takes over the companies that are weak in terms of what in terms of um, collection of profit also in terms of the exploitation of customers also in terms of the exploitation of um, employees okay right so now moving on we have what we have uh, the alliance when you talk of this alliance we normally uh, refer to an association formed uh, between organizations with similar interest nature or qualities for mutual uh, benefit so in most cases yes organizations can want can associate with uh, one another but in this regard they are not taking over one another but what they do we find that they share market they share the market they agree together that, okay when I let's work together, when I concentrate on this aspect, why myself I'm going to concentrate on this aspect. But those companies, they are still separate. It's just that they are working hand in hand. That's the meaning of um, a word uh, alliance. Okay, right. So now let's move on to another term that we call um, hedging. Uh, hedging is when uh, one tries to invest his money in such a way that uh, its value grows faster than inflation. Okay, right. So now I know this one is it, it, it normally happens on the ground where now we find that um, some people value they try by all means to invest or to multiply uh, their monies or their assets before they can actually uh, pay much at, uh, what attention towards inflation. So what do you mean by word inflation? Inflation we refer to the persistent or general, I mean, or continuous increase in the general price levels of goods and services. In this regard, we check the what the basket of goods and services that are what that are increasing. We don't only concentrate on one item to say that okay, if now the price of um uh, what uh, 750 milliliter coke keeps on increasing, uh, uh, then we are saying that uh, there is inflation. No. That is not an inflation. Inflation, we check what different prices of um, uh, goods and services, not only one good. When we talk of one good and when one good keeps um, on changing in terms of the price levels, then that we call it price hedging, not um, uh, uh, what inflation, meaning we call it um, a price hike. Okay, right. So now moving on, um, uh, grade one, moving on, grade um, 11, uh, we are going to check uh, what the introduction. So under introduction, businesses operate in a dynamic business environment that pose many challenges uh, on their operations. What do you mean by, by saying these words? When you talk of a word dynamic, we refer to a change. So meaning that uh, business environments or the surroundings of the environments, they normally change. They keep on changing. They are not static. So if they are not static, they keep on changing. It means also the, the, the management of the business or the owners of the business, they should have the flexibility as well to adapt or they should have the flexibility as well to learn the environments of their business. And also they should check by all means or try by all means to check uh, the strategies that can necessarily uh, what, uh, 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 what feed for that uh, particular uh, challenge. Because now if you check now, we are, we are now living in millennium, then when you want to use the strategy for, 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 for 80s, that on its own is not going to, 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 to work. Because now if you check, uh, we are living on a dynamic what on a dynamic um, a situation. So now where uh, are what uh, aspects or vectors are normally keep on changing on daily basis. Okay, right. So now uh, again, it says the profitability and success of businesses depend on how they respond to challenges posed by the internal or external uh, uh, business um, environment. This is true. What they mean is that the profits of the business will entirely, the profit of the business will entirely uh, depend on the strategy that the business has adapted to. Remember the major aim here of opening a business is to make profit. 
and there are those aspects or there are those surroundings that can hinder the business from collecting the profit and now the as the owner of the business or as the manager of the business you should sit down and then you check okay when i draft my mission statement even if they are they are down there they should be flexible in such a way that they help you to attain the dream they help you to attain or get to the vision that you did have from the start so now uh, when you talk of the success of the business success of the business entirely goes together with the profitability of the business the moment the business is not uh, making profit then you can will never ever say that business is successful but to only be successful if it, it does make a um, profit and it has been what anticipated and also if the vision of the business has been met and also if the uh, mission statement of the business as well has been what has been drafted in a proper manner so as to address the meeting or the attainment of the vision of the business as um, a plan so now remember great levels i did say it from the start that um, we have different surroundings of the business and the approach toward this different surroundings of the business they shouldn't be static there should be flexibility on that today you may find the challenge that you are facing today is quite different from the challenge that you are going to face tomorrow in your business so now if we're not the challenge you are facing today and then uh, you want to treat it as much or the same as the one that you are going to face the next day that is going to be totally wrong so now it means that um, in a business you should always be flexible enough to make sure that um, you keep changing on your strategies not rely on one strategies because one strategy will never ever take your business anywhere okay right so now also businesses operate within the political context uh, of the country therefore changes in governments of the country can have a negative impact on on businesses yes why why is this the case if you check now uh, when you talk of the government the government we refer to what we refer to different set of bodies that are normally forming this uh, government so now this um a uh, uh, set of bodies one of them is a pro is a politician or they are politicians and if you check politicians these are the people who are occupying the, the driver's seat of the government and the moment these people are fatal it means that the government is going to what the government is going to fail to address its mandate the mandate of improving the infrastructure in that particular country the mandate of keeping capital transfers when we talk of capital transfers we talk of the the grants such as um uh, old age grant we refer to uh, the grants such as um child grant also unemployment grant also disability grant so now if also there is political unrest there is a fight between or amongst political parties or that one on its own as well is going to hinder or is going to uh, what act as a challenge uh, towards the business from achieving their set goals or their set mission remember the major mission of the business or the major goal of the business or the major aim of the business or the major purpose of the business is to make um, a profit so now if there is a what there is a, uh, a swag uh, governance in that particular country it means that for businesses to attain uh, the what the, the the profits that they have been anticipating is not going to be easy so in that regard it means that they are going to be negatively affected how negatively affected it means that now for them to collect uh, expected or anticipated profits is going to be a challenge sometimes you may find that uh, the the political party that is now in a in a in a government you find that they impose too much uh, uh, company tax and then now this too much company tax is a struggle for different set of businesses to settle so in that regard it means that uh, businesses are going to what they are going to be forced to pay a lot of our percentages from their profits of which at the end of the day you find that they struggle to open more branches they struggle to pay for for salaries and wages again you find that they struggle to keep up with our with purchasing the necessary inputs uh, for processing or the necessary inputs or stock so that they can generate um, a profit okay right so now uh great levels again you can take um the issue of um there is an increasing trend for people to move freely between countries and for businesses to trade across um international uh, borders okay right 
So now this one, uh, if you still remember in a, in, a, in a previous lesson, I did talk of what I did talk of the uh, the, the, the what the, the brain drain where people are actually uh, trained in, his, in such a particular country and the resources for the country in particular from the government has been spent on them then upon the completion of the skills that they've been uh, attending training for then they go and join other countries meaning now uh, those countries where they are going to join now they are the ones who are going to, to benefit okay right now here we can talk of the the profession like engineering also chartered accountant or chartered accounting most of them if you can share or, or undertake your research you see that those areas there are larger numbers of um, brain trains so now uh, that also can be a challenge okay businesses need strong relationship to succeed them um, in the marketplace yeah what do we mean by businesses need a strong relationship uh, to succeed them um, in the marketplace remember the marketplace you are not alone there and when we talk of a wet market we talk of um, a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold so now in the market uh, one can actually ask why am i seeing a market is a platform i'm seeing a market is a platform because um uh, the transactions are concerning goods and services they can be performed physically or they can be performed online or electronically so that is why i hate it when elena says a market is a place because now it means that you are restricting uh, the transactions that are, are, are performed by electronically so now that is why i'm actually saying that uh, the market is nothing but a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold okay right so now if, if you still remember in the previous one in the previous um, slides i did say that uh, for a business to succeed it means that uh, there should be what there should be consistency in terms of the collection of um, uh, profits but the moment the business fails to have consistency in the level of um, collection of profits then in that regard then the business uh, will never ever uh, be successful okay right so now let's check ways in which businesses can adapt to challenges of the micro market and the macro environment so now if you still remember in a previous one in a previous uh, previous uh, slides we did what we did um, discuss the issue of um, the components under each and every environment so many in this regard we are going to check ways at which businesses can adapt to micro environment meaning uh, how businesses can get used to the challenges that are being brought by employees how to deal with difficult employees and remember i said these difficult employees can boils down to uh, the personalities of the employees some employees you may find that they they are complainers they complain a lot some employees you may find that they are lazy some employees you may find that they they, they are what they are very very slow in terms of production and of goods and uh, services so now uh, we can only categorize them under the umbrella of um, uh, difficult employees but bear in mind that here we are actually referring to different um, set of um, personalities okay right so now let's check how best businesses should deal with uh, difficult employees number one businesses can deal with difficult employees as by revisiting their recruitment and induction of process policies so now what they must do they must first check how how they did uh, recruit them how did they end up hiring them and also they must check if they did give them proper induction showing them uh, the proper places around the business also showing them uh, if they did teach them properly how to relate well with their bosses and also showing them or reminding them if these people uh, did understand their roles and, uh, and, 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 what, and, and their roles and duties, how are they expected to perform their roles or duties? Because sometimes you find that some employees, they feel comfortable in such a way that they forget to execute their roles and then they end up now moving up and down, gossiping about one employee uh, to, the, to the next or to the other. So it is so important for the business to make sure that they revisit their recruitment files and also they revisit the induction policies that they have uh, in place. Okay, right. Now also, uh, in the second manner, businesses need to develop strategies to deal with different types of personalities. 
this one I did say it. So now, when you talk of the strategies here, we're actually referring to techniques that uh, businesses or the, the managers or the employers should adapt to to make sure that they deal with what they deal with different set of um, personalities. To deal with someone who is a complainer is totally different from dealing with someone who is what who is very slow in terms of what in terms of production of goods and services. Because now, if you want to apply the same or the same approach across uh, the board, it means that that is not gonna, going to work for you at all. You must devise your strategies and uh, check how best you can deal with a complainer. And also you must check how best you can deal with uh, this particular person who is always taking their feet in terms of um, uh, uh, execution of their roles. Okay, right. Also, businesses must offer counseling sessions to employees with personal problems. Yes, yeah, sometimes you may find that some employees, they, they are difficult at their workplace because they, they, they will be having uh, uh, what their personal problems. You find that they're having uh, personal issues at home. One might find that at home there's no food and then they failed to budget or they are sinking in debts or they are sinking in credits. So in that regard, it means that that is going to hinder their, 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 their productivity at the workplace because now what will be lingering in their minds will be, hey, I, I have this um, uh, amount that I should settle, but now my salary is not enough to finance such. So in that regard, it means that that person will actually be so difficult to deal with. Okay, right. So now let's let's move on to the lack of um, uh, vision and um, mission. So now when we check this, um, management must have a clear vision, which is understood and communicated this to all employees. So meaning in this regard, um, the management should always um, make sure that um, they do what they they what they explain uh, their what their their dream uh, clearly to each and every uh, member of their of their group because sometimes you find that some of the employees they don't know what to do why because now you find that the dream of the business has never been not explained to them in such a way that um, they understand okay right also now the vision uh, the vision uh, must in, and the vision must and mission statement have to be implemented in a way that uh, shapes the internal environment. As I said earlier, make sure that uh, you hold a meeting as a manager of the business. Hold a meeting, explain to your, to, your, to your subordinates or to your followers that you know what, this is the dream of the business. These are the profits that we want to achieve by the end of this year so that they know even the, what, the, the, the type of the efforts or the level of the efforts or the percentages of the efforts that they apply on the workplace so as to achieve the set goals or the set what the set um, uh, objective and also we saying that the vision and mission should direct the use of resources and actions of the employees so meaning in this regard uh, you should always um, come on the ground as the manager or the leader to make sure that resources are actually channeled towards um, where they should be uh, 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 utilized Sometimes you may find that employees, instead of channeling the resources where they're supposed to be channeled, but now they use those resources or they divert the resources towards their own benefits. So in that regard, it means that uh, your business is going to take long to achieve uh, the set goal or set mission. Okay, right. So now also businesses' values must be evident in ethical standards and the way employees are treated. This one is so crucial. Remember, in a business, there are those set uh, rules or the code of ethics. When you talk of the code of ethics, we check the what we check the rules and regulations that have been set by the the business. And now these are uh, uh, rules and regulations that have been set by the business. It should be clear and it should be also explained to followers or subordinates so that they know what is expected of them. Sometimes some people they think when 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 we talk of a word professionalism. Professionalism is just going to work when you are wearing a tie. No, it's totally different from that. When you talk of the word professionalism, is when an employee is able to follow the what the code of ethics, the code of um, uh, rules and regulations that have been drafted by that particular company. Instead of uh, what, instead of saving their own uh, personal interest. Also, the type of treatment counts at the workplace. 
How is your, 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 your manager? How is your leader at the workplace? Is this leader the one who is using autocratic uh, uh, leadership style or democratic leadership style or laissez-faire leadership style or charismatic leadership style where the leader is always um, flexible, always charming? So now, also you must check the style of um, uh, leadership that you are using or the style of management that you are also using. So that if you check that you have been applying this particular style of leadership or this particular style of uh, management and you see that your, your employees are still, what, are still bored and they still feel like uh, they are mistreated, then adapt to the next strategy. Okay, fine. So now moving on. Uh, we are also lending on the management must be able to anticipate changes in the internal environment so that they can plan goals and operation uh, proactively. How are you, how how is the management going to be able to anticipate these changes? They can only anticipate these changes if they are able to give what they are able to give able to give what satisfactory survey to its employees. They must give that survey to its employees to ask employees concerning the working conditions, to ask employees concerning the, 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 the reaching of uh, the deadlines. Okay, so in that regard, then the business or the manager or the, the leader will, 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 will see the, the, what, the approach that, okay, it means that uh, I should change my approach. It means that I should, what, I should make some necessary changes here and there before it's too late. Remember the major aim of operating into a business is to make profit. No profit, no business. No consistency in terms of collection of profits, then in that regard, the business will never ever be successful. Okay, right. So now also, uh, let's move on to what, let's move on to another what, another uh, challenge, which is lack of adequate management skills. So now this one, uh, you may find that uh, the manager of that particular business lacks some skills to perform their duties so now if there is a problem like that in a in a management areas then it means that uh, subordinates or flowers down there it is not going to be clear for them on what to do why is that the case because now if the the the, the, the leader is confused or the manager is confused what more about the subordinates or the followers it means as well they are going to be totally confused so that is why we are saying that to gauge such challenge a business manager needs to be skilled in technical aspects of their job and dealing with uh, employees so it means in this regard so these managers should what should enhance their skills they should enroll for short courses because some short courses of management they are there uh, if the manager enrolls for such then that is going to help them to enhance their own skills unlike just sitting there then is someone who is actually confused okay right so now also managers need good interpersonal and conflict um, resolve or resolution skills. So okay, so when you talk of a good interpersonal skills, this one we check the interaction of the a management or the leader with its subordinate. Some of the managers or some of the leaders, the way they interact with the subordinate is totally not good at all. They always shout at, uh, at employees or sometimes if there is whatsapp platform where uh, the communication should be sent you find that they send whatsoever the wrongs that has been done by the employees via that whatsapp platform that is totally wrong that poses a wrong interpersonal skills you don't know how to deal with people in a good manner also when you talk of the conflict resolution when you talk of the word conflict conflict is when there is a misunderstanding amongst or between uh, what between the workers so now this misunderstanding maybe can come as a result of what clashes of ideas so now if there is clashes of ideas then it means that uh, uh, that um, uh, manager or data leader should adapt to necessary resolution skills when to come up with um, a solution to that prevailing problem okay right so now also managers must attend management and leadership courses I did explain this one uh, already so also businesses may request mentors and coaches from successful businesses to train their their managers training is always so important because the moment training is taking place because no one in this world no one in this world is perfect we keep learning on daily basis so that those people have been in a game more years than us so we do have to learn from those people who have been in a game for a longer period of time don't say i'm a manager swallow your pride 
go and learn uh, from such um, uh, people. Okay, right. So now we talk of now, uh, you know, strikes and go slow. So managers need to deal fairly and transparently with our trade unions. I did explain uh, to you the meaning of the word trade union. We said that trade union we normally refer to, uh, to those organizations uh, that uh, talk on behalf of their their what their members whenever there are issues uh, taking place at their different set of um, workplaces. So now they need to build relationships with um on your with, with union representatives so that through positive negotiation strikes can be solved. So now uh, trade unions are the ones who can actually what uh, fuel uh, what uh, fuel the strike to take place or actually talk to their representative and that uh, they will solve um, the above mentioned um, uh, problem. The business can also make use of the CCMA to help reach an agreement with the trade unions. Also, employers need a labor relations strategy where a business engages positively and meaningfully with its employees before tensions arise and strikes um, are threatened. Okay, in this regard, uh, what is actually uh, needed is that trade unions shouldn't uh, shouldn't what shouldn't uh, uh, always be harsh or now promise their 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 what their members things that they will never ever uh, what uh, respect or do what they must do they should always uh, try to promote a good what working uh, relationship between its member and the business that they are working for businesses must be able to manage employees in such a way that um, good working relationships are maintained and these puts are resolved uh, timely. So I did explain that um, in a previous um, in a previous discussion. So now also now let's check what let's check um, the issue of what let's check the issue of the market environment. How businesses can adapt to the market environment. So now under market environment, we are going to check uh, the components such as competition, shortage of supply, uh, change in consumer behavior, demographics and psychographics, socio cultural vectors as well. So now let's check up how best businesses can deal with the competition. Businesses must take into account this entry into an operation within what within the market and also conduct research and identify customer needs. It is so important for a business to give what uh, satisfactory uh, survey forms to customers to ask them whether uh, they are satisfied by their services or whether they are satisfied by what by the care that um, they give as the sellers of goods and services also offer products or service so now here as well they must check the quality of the product or the service that they are selling how will they know if they are they, they sell the product of higher quality to customers and their customers are actually happy they only get to know such information if they issue to them uh, what um, uh, the assessment or survey or form to check uh, uh, what whether the the customers are actually happy or not also offer more personal uh, services again they must ensure that the staff is well trained and knowledgeable this is so important under each and every business because most of the staff members that are not uh, well trained to treat the customers is a struggle to treat the customers is a change is is is, is, is what is a challenge because they don't have that proper care so also let's say shortage of the supply meaning here is when the business is struggling in terms of um, uh, what buying is a vector so production necessary to produce goods and services what they must do they must select um, suppliers which are, are trustworthy and reliable and also maintain a good relationship with suppliers and also enter into um, contracts with suppliers to secure uh, raw materials of good quality and um, sufficient um, uh, quantities also they must uh, make sure they select uh, suppliers which are reputable trustworthy and reliable and also must take over suppliers to ensure continuity of its supply and this is called um, backward integration okay right so now change in consumer behavior so also changing consumer behavior can pose a challenge to the business so now let's check how the business should make sure that they maintain the same behavior from their own consumers so marketing of the business should conduct uh, an ongoing research to investigate the general behavioral patterns also the marketing manager must monitor and respond to changes in consumer patterns of consumption so now as well as check demographics 
uh, of um, uh, the business. We said that also demographics and psychographics can pose uh, a serious challenge on the business. And then let's check how businesses can adapt to this or can actually uh, defeat this. Businesses need to ensure that information is up to date and accurate. They also need to interpret data accurately so that they can plan an effective marketing strategy and plan. They also uh, need to keep track and study the attitude and taste and desires of the market. So now let's check um, the challenges uh, when it comes to when it comes to social cultural vectors. So social cultural vectors uh, here, uh, the the business should make sure that the entrepreneurs need to remain informed of social cultural changes. Also, they must be able to respond to social economic vectors by adapting to internal environment of the business. And also, businesses must be able to modify the marketing strategy and the marketing plan accordingly. Also, business must employ people from diverse and social cultural groups so that they can get an inside view on how they meet the needs of the uh, different um, uh, types of groups. Okay, right. So now let's check um, four ways in which businesses can adapt to challenges of the microenvironment. So now the four ways in which businesses can adapt to challenges of the microenvironment uh, will be discussed in details uh, uh, below. So now when we check, we check the information management. How is the information managed? Uh, remember, when we talk of the information management, they, they should be finding of the information. How is the information actually being collected? Which criteria is it used to collect the information? And also, we are going to check uh, uh, the recording of the information. How is this information being recorded? Also, those account a lot because if the information is poorly managed, it means that at the end of the day, that information is, going, is not going to be accurate at all. So now also let's check uh, the strategic responses. Mega takeover acquisition alliances, so also organizational design and flexibility, uh, influence of the environment and social uh, responsibilities. If you still remember great talks in the in the previous slides, I did explain uh, the, the environment and social responsibilities and also uh, the direct or the direct influence uh, that come from different types of uh, different types of uh, the environment, uh, be it what be it the microenvironment, which is inside uh, the business premises, where we talk of the likes of uh, uh, the, the employee's behavior, where we talk of the likes of uh, the, the vision of the business or the mission statement of the business. And also, if you still remember, we did talk of the extent of control under, under this um, uh, environment. And then we said the control is full because uh, this is the environment that is entirely found inside the business premises. And then also, we did touch on the market environment, where market environment, we said that we check out the components such as customer customers as well as the suppliers. And then we said um, the extent of control is a semi-control. So then we also discussed the issue of the macro environment where it is um, uh, totally found outside um, the business premises and the extent of control in this regard we said is what there is no control at all. Why? Because here we talk of the, the legal and then the business doesn't have uh, any say when it comes to legal matters and also the business doesn't have any say when it comes to uh, political our political behavior and also the business doesn't have what any say when it comes to uh, natural what natural disasters behavior so great great levens at this juncture i'd love to say thank you very much let's meet in a next lesson